Hello everyone. This video then will talk you through Alaska, which is your case study for a cold environment. And you would use this case study in the cold environment section, which is found in section B on paper one. So AQA say you have to know for a cold environment, its development opportunities, and also the challenges that exist there. So just thinking about Alaska, we can draw out four major opportunities and three significant challenges then that this cold environment faces. So the first opportunity we'll look at is fishing. So Alaska's got a really abundant natural environment. It's got about three million lakes, 3,000 rivers. So there's plenty of opportunities here for the fishing industry. Fishing here is so popular that one in 10 people are employed within fishing. Perhaps even more significant than that is the fact then that some of the biggest fisheries for salmon and crab are found there and that 78 and a half thousand people are employed within fishing itself. Now that's great because what that means is it's adding about six billion dollars US dollars we're talking here to the USA. If you think about where that money is likely to be invested now that would be used for developing things like schools and hospitals and people pay their taxes but also to support the local people and the local economy. So fishing here for people is a huge opportunity. However, on the flip side of that, and perhaps one negative to keep in mind with this fishing, is that some of these jobs are what we call seasonal work. Okay? It's seasonal because the climate here prevents people from fishing at certain points in the year. We know that it's not always as nice and sunny as that picture suggests. And in fact, at times can be a rather harsh, cold environment. That's not going to support them, people being able to fish. Okay, so that threatens that line of work. We might also say that this opportunity is pretty sustainable. We would say, well, it's sustainable because quotas are placed on the amount that people are allowed to fish. So they're only allowed to take certain sized fish from the ocean. That's important then because it allows the fish that are left to reproduce and therefore replace the fish that have been caught. So that would make it sustainable. If something's sustainable, it means you can meet the needs of today, which you can do because you can fish today, but also you can meet the needs of future generations. And that would meet the needs of future generations because it's allowing that fish population to repopulate. So that's fishing, which on the whole is pretty good for people, the economy and the environment. Another opportunity that we have then is mineral extraction. So mineral extraction for Alaska, again, is another significant positive so, Alaska was once known then as the Gold Rush State. So, about one-fifth of its wealth, which is pretty significant again, so 20% or one-fifth of the wealth here, comes from gold. So, again, that's a really important, isn't it? If we've got one-fifth of the wealth coming from gold... And we've got loads of other mining opportunities. It's not just gold we're getting here, silver, iron ore. The money that's generated from that, again, is going to be reinvested back into Alaska, isn't it? So this opportunity of mineral extraction and mining is pretty successful, but maybe not as successful as fishing. Okay, And we might say, well... 
maybe it's not as sustainable as fishing either. We've only got a finite amount of resource here, haven't we? Okay. Once this resource runs out here, can we continue to mine? Probably not. Okay. Whereas with the fishing, we know that's sustainable as it's allowing that population to regrow. So at the moment we would say, yeah, this is pretty good. It's contributing $2.2 billion towards Alaska's GDP. Fantastic, it's bringing in lots of money. However, in the future, there's potential that maybe this opportunity could be threatened a little bit. So if we go a little bit further than that, we might want to start thinking about energy as well. Now, energy is a pretty significant opportunity for Alaska too. So over half of their income comes from oil and gas. So if this opportunity was to become under threat, that's going to be really significant then for the Alaskan economy. So we want to think, well, OK, is there anything that maybe protects this? Well, what's happening then with the money that's generated here as well? So the picture here shows you a place called Prado Bay. So this is somewhere that's really popular, OK? And it's somewhere that's supported by the Trans-Alaskan Oil Pipeline. And we'll talk about that more as a threat in a second. But the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline then connects Prado Bay with other places around Alaska. And it allows that oil to be pumped and to be moved around. And if that oil is allowed to be pumped and move around, it means it's easily shipped to customers. So if customers are there, we know they must be buying it which again is going to generate income. So another significant opportunity that comes from energy here is that 90% of tax comes from the oil and gas. So if we've got a lot of tax here coming from oil and gas, we know that's again going to be invested in education and healthcare, hospitals, doctors, and that's going to improve them the economy as well. A minute ago I briefly said something about the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline and I said to you we'll talk about why that's a threat in a minute. Okay but for now a big opportunity of this Trans-Alaskan Pipeline is that they've now started to put it underground. They recognise that one threat of the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline was that it was interrupting migration routes of animals like the caribou. So by putting it underground, they've now mitigated or tried to combat that threat and protect the caribou population that's left. So we've thought about energy, we've thought about mineral extraction and mining, we've talked about fishing. The last opportunity to talk about them would be tourism. Okay, so we know tourists are attracted here for the amazing scenery and wildlife. So we know we've got lots of species like whales, for example, and the caribou that tourists are attracted. They want to come and see. This generates about two million visitors each year. Now that's two million visitors that all need a hotel room. They all want to go and experience the wildlife. They want to go to lots of attractions. They want to eat out at restaurants and buy a souvenir. So this is going to massively increase employment, isn't it, in Alaska? But one big challenge here, as we said when we talked about fishing, is that a lot of this work is seasonal. Okay? In the harsher winter months, we're not going to get very many tourists who are going to be prepared to go on holiday to Alaska for the scenery and the wildlife, especially if they're not going to be able to experience much of it. 
So that seasonal work then can mean that some people in Alaska are only employed or have a job then for half of the year. So if we zoom out, we've got four pretty big opportunities there. Each have got some really big benefits, but there are some drawbacks and we thought about those drawbacks. And in your nine markers, you'd want to assess the extent or weigh up well, how good are those opportunities? Are there any limitations? So whilst you're weighing up the opportunities, you might also want to start thinking then about the challenges. So if we think about the challenges now, and we've sort of touched on this briefly in some of our explanations, one thing that's definitely a challenge here is the temperature, okay? Now, the temperature is such a challenge here because in parts of Alaska, we can see temperatures going to about minus nine degrees. And we talked about a place called Prudho Bay, didn't we? Now, that's significant for the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline. It's popular with tourists. OK, so if we've got the temperature there going down to minus nine degrees, We've got snow, we've got strong winds. It's a huge danger to people there. So healthcare can often be some distance away. So if people were to fall ill, for example, getting them the healthcare and medical attention they need would be particularly difficult. Whilst we're still thinking about the temperature and the climate as a challenge, we might also say, well, the lack of sunlight as well is another big challenge to Alaska. So because Alaska is so far north, it often experiences months where there's no sunlight at all. So if you've got no sunlight and cold temperatures, it can make it really challenging to build a home or even to get a job puts things like employment and the economy under massive amounts of strain. So if we think about temperature and climate, we might also want to start thinking then about the inaccessibility. Okay, So inaccessibility is another huge challenge okay, that Alaska faces. So we know it's a long way from the rest of the USA. So it makes it quite expensive to access here. Okay, and not only is it expensive, you're gonna have to use air transport or the ice roads to get there. The permafrost here as well, is another huge challenge. So permafrost is when you've got permanently frozen ground so most of Alaska then experiences permafrost. And in summer, you can't go off road then because this layer melts. And this would cause your vehicle to be stuck in the permafrost. And last but not least then, whilst we're thinking about inaccessibility then, we also want to think about population density here. So in the case of Alaska, they've got a low population density. Okay? That means there's less than one person per square kilometre. So less than one person per square kilometre means that then people are often further away from employment opportunities and services like doctors and hospitals. So people have to travel further, they have no choice. So sometimes this can make accessing employment and jobs another huge challenge for people. And finally then, infrastructure as well is another huge challenge. I sort of talked about infrastructure earlier on when I said the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline poses a huge threat then to Alaska as well. So 
the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline, which is what you can see in the picture here, has to be built on stilts. Okay? If it's not built on stilts, there's a risk that it could melt the permafrost, that permanently frozen ground. And a bit like we said, well, the cars could become stuck if they drove on the permafrost. Similar thing here could happen with the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline. However, we run the risk here of there being an oil spill. Okay, so the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline then needs to be built on stilts to avoid melting the permafrost. Let's add that one in. So if we move away from thinking about the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline, another issue here then that we might have potentially is if we've got low levels of sunlight, that's going to challenge when building work can take place. So construction work in Alaska can only really take place in the summer months when there's daylight and warmer temperatures. Imagine trying to build a house in the dark. You're not going to be very successful. And remember, those new buildings have to be built on stilts then in order to prevent that permafrost from melting. To go along with this as well then, airports and runways are painted white then to reflect sunlight. Okay, and stop them warming up too much on a sunny day. That's trying to stop the damage to the runway then, that melting permafrost would also cause as well. So if I was going to add one more point here to my notes, I would add in that construction can only take place in summer. I think that one really nicely sums up the challenges that infrastructure poses then to Alaska. So, yes, we're saying here that there are some challenges to Alaska, but we thought a lot about the opportunities as well. Okay. And so it's important in your nine mark questions that you weigh up the opportunities and challenges that there are for Alaska. Often those nine mark questions will say to you, well, to what extent do you think the opportunities outweigh the challenges? If we put that in simple words, the examiner there is asking you, well, do the good things in Alaska outweigh the bad? So as part of your revision as well, you might want to start to consider, well, how much do you agree the opportunities here are bigger than challenges? Or do you think it's the other way around? I hope you found this video.